Hello everybody, this is Evan with Tabletop Gaming Guild coming to you today with our review for Fitna, Global War in the Middle East. So I'm going to take you down to the tabletop here, I'm going to show you a little bit of what's going on with the game and then I'll come back and give you my final thoughts. So we here we have is actually the first scenario that I have set up and played a couple turns in. So Fitna, Global War in the Middle East actually simulates uh, modern combat into the Middle East and all the different ramifications of any kind of conflict that goes on into that. So the map is actually quite huge here. This is just the upper section. That's where this scenario takes place. Let's pan a little bit there. First scenario just covers the civil war in Syria. There's 11 scenarios in total. Uh, stuff covering from war against the Islamic State to if Turkey has a military intervention into the war in Syria, uh, all the way down to the entire campaign, which involves U.S. involvement into the war for the Middle East. So, through here, I'll come into this game, a counter based game. So, all the counters here will give you their strengths, their movements. You can see different areas are covered there, and there's many different factions that are played in here. There's only about four or five in this scenario, and then we have everything from Russians to Turkey, Iraqi Imperial Guards, and uh, like I mentioned too, uh, United States. So these will represent the different units that are involved, such as like right here, the Syrian 5th Division. Over here we've got some Sunni militia. Hezbollah, the Syrian 7th Division, so on and so forth. Armor, infantry, all sorts of different pieces are covered there. Um, you have to keep track of various things such as if units are isolated, if they have supply. It's all covered into the scenario notes on where supply and all that goes. But we'll actually get into what the heart of the game is. So the game is basically card driven. So there's two sets of cards. Um, there's asset cards and event cards. Okay, and they're marked here onto the back. These are events, these are assets, and also you can tell by the color up in the, um, by the label there. So these are, you're gonna have a hand of four cards. And on your turn, the very first thing you do is you pick um, cards that you wanna play. You can pick one, several, none, and you play them off the event cards, and then you'll see that they'll all do different things. And there's a whole stack of them, and each uh, scenario will tailor its deck to various things in there. I just pulled out different things, which you can see, like stuff is you get reinforcements. You can have stuff like Israel strike Syria. It's going to all have effects onto the game itself. Now the assets, these are cards that are actually going to take more effect of what's going to happen during the turn, helping. Uh, protect, get more attacks, helping your defense uh, for your cards or for your tokens out there. Um, you'll see it mentions a lot about combat or column shifts. So here's the quick reference guide. So on the quick reference guide, it's going to give you the sequence of play over here, um, events, and then you check your supplies and planning movement and offenses. I'll talk about those in a little bit. So when you play your cards, you're going to have a number up in the corner. On your planning phase, you're going to actually discard up to two cards, and you're going to add up those numbers. So say you were going to discard these two cards over here, the 8 and the 4. So you add those numbers up. So 8 plus 4, 12. That's going to give you 12 uh, operation points. So what that means is for every two that you have, you can use it for uh, movement or for your offenses. So you declare how many of those op points that you're going to use for movement. And then that movement's actually fairly simple. If you look on the columns, the last column there, three, that's how many squares a unit can move. You follow the tracks. That's the different ways that they can move. And they have to move into open squares. Once you get all your movement done, you're going to go into offenses. So offenses, all you have to do is you pick units that you have and they can launch an offensive 
into a neighboring square like that. So you're going to add up how much offense you have, check the defense, come to the chart, figure out your chart offensively. So if you have a very high difference, you roll on that chart on this side versus on this way. Roll a d6 and it's going to give you one of these combinations here, which goes and figures onto that. That's where the column shifts go onto those cards. I'll tell you to move columns to the left, which is more for the defense, column story, which is more for the attack. And then you just kind of repeat that going back and forth between the opponents. A lot of the cards, uh, like you saw, will have many different events and it's going to really drive and change the game. So you have to really watch what's being played and you can't commit everything all at once. So it's a really good flow to the game. I really, really like it. But I'm going to take you up from the tabletop here and give you some of my final thoughts about the game. All right, so back from the tabletop here, um, my final thoughts. So Fitna itself, I really like the game. It's it, it seems really heavy when you first look at it. When I first punched it, laid it out, I was like, oh my, this is going to be really intensive. I have a background of playing a lot of war games that were counter base. A lot of the old stuff from the 70s and 80s um, that I inherited from my dad and played with him for a while. Um, this game's actually way, way, way simpler than it looks. Um, once you understand the card base system with it, the game will fly by. I set this up to play against myself, and within three minutes of having it out and really understanding how the card system works, I had it down packed and it moved through about three turns super quick. It flies by. Um, it's really fun. Um, like I mentioned on the tabletop there, uh, you really have to pay attention to what's going on with the cards because some of the cards are really powerful and can change things real quick. You're lining up, you have some of your powerful units lined up to make a breakthrough. You're ready to go. Next thing you know, an IED goes off and your attack is stumped. You set up a defense, all of a sudden you're carpet bombed or um, heavy uh, air comes and softens your position. Next thing you know, you're overran. So you have to keep everything in mind. You can't commit everything to one, much like an actual warfare is now. Um, it simulates it really well. From what I understand, uh, France actually uses this game to simulate things that are happening into the Mies before they actually make commitments to do things. So that speaks to the level of how well the game works and how realistic it works. So uh, if you're into wargaming, um, but you don't want to get into the miniature stuff, but um, the high overview is something that you like, this game is actually definitely for you. Um, this will be in my collection for a long time. I can't wait to pull it out and play with three, four, or five people on there and simulate the entire conflict that's going on over there. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. So if you like this video, um, you have questions, comments, leave them down below. Hit our subscribe button. Every single person that subscribes definitely helps us out. We can bring more content to you guys. Um, let me know what you think if you played this or if you want to play this. Um, it's also available on Tabletop Simulator from what I saw. So, you know, reach out. We'll, we'll definitely get a game going on there. But definitely hit that subscribe button help us out. This is Evan with Tabletop Gaming Guild. We'll see you later.